Have you ever came across a story of a discovery that is so far from what we are taught that it triggers an interest within your mind that suddenly makes you aware of the great deceptions and hidden knowledge in the world? A sort of sudden awakening of the hidden consciousness. Do you understand what we mean by this, guys? One such discovery comes from a 1909 discovery deep in the Grand Canyon of artifacts that are not recognized as anything else but Egyptian in their origins. Does that not just blow your mind or what? We are going to present some information in this video that is going to sound completely impossible. So just keep an open mind. Just wait until you hear this. In 1909, the Arizona Gazette published evidence made by two Smithsonian funded archaeologists that they discovered an ancient Egyptian city in the Grand Canyon. This is something the Smithsonian has denied this project and even denied the existence of the two archaeologists. Strange, right? The discoveries conclusively prove that the race which inhabited this mysterious cavern in the canyon, hewn in solid rock by human hands, was of Egyptian origin, tracing back to Ramses, the mystery of the prehistoric peoples of North America, their ancient arts, who they were and where they came from, could be solved. Egypt and the Nile, and Arizona, and the Colorado will be linked by a historical chain running back to the ages which staggers the wildest fancy of the fictionist. A large tomb with mummified humans, as well as a mix-up of Oriental and Egyptian artifacts, as well as tablets with hieroglyphs inscribed onto them were said to have been discovered. Although this remote area of the Grand Canyon makes for perilous traveling, expeditions by private collectors and academics went forward. The site of the discovery was roughly 42 miles from El Tovar Crystal Canyon, and the Arizona Gazette article noted that the cavern's entrance was 1,500 feet down a sheer cliff. This is not the easiest terrain to cover, but it's topography that could be overcome today. Conspiracy theorist John Rhodes claims to know the exact location of the caverns. To make things even more bizarre, David Icke connects the Grand Canyon discovery with reptilian overlords in his 1999 book, The Biggest Secret. This is not only the oldest discovery in America, it is the most valuable in the world. Nearly a mile underground, about 1,480 feet below the surface, the long main passageway has been delved into to find another mammoth chamber from which radiates scores of passageways like the spokes of a wheel. It's hard to believe such a story could have come out of thin air. If this story is true, it would radically change the current view that there was no trans-oceanic contact in pre-Columbian times. Is the idea that ancient Egyptians came from the Arizona area in the ancient past so objectionable and preposterous that it must be covered up? Perhaps the Smithsonian Institute is more interested in maintaining the status quo than rocking the boat with astonishing new discoveries that overturn previously accepted academic teachings. We were amazed to note that much of the area on the north side of the canyon has Egyptian names. The area around 94 Mile Creek and Trinity Creek had names like Tower of Set, Tower of Ra, Osiris Temple, and Isis Temple. That can't be a coincidence, can it? Indeed, this entire area with the Egyptian and Hindu place names in the Grand Canyon is a forbidden zone. No one is allowed into this large area. We could only conclude that this was the area where the vaults were located. Yet today this area is curiously off limits to all hikers and even in a large part park personnel. What do you guys think of the discovery of an ancient city in the Grand Canyon? If you have any further information on the subject, then please post in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching, and remember, the ways by which we arrive at knowledge are hardly less wonderful than the discovery of these things themselves. The Phoenix Gazette published this long story about how um, a kind of explorer named Kincaid and was in the Grand Canyon, and, and he saw what he thought was a mine up on the wall and there were tailings coming down. So he climbed up there thinking it was an ancient mine. And what he found was these catacombs that went deep back into the cliffs of the Grand Canyon. And he claims that what he found in there were uh, Egyptian type artifacts, also artifacts that looked uh, kind of Tibetan or, or Hindu or something. And statues and swords and uh, even mummies and things like that. And the whole thing is a really 
bizarre story. And supposedly the Smithsonian Institution came, did excavations, and then took all these artifacts back to Washington, D.C., where they disappeared. And uh, the stories later were that uh, nothing had happened, the Smithsonian denied that they had done any uh, excavations or, or had any artifacts. And so the whole thing uh, was just kind of went underground for 50, 60 years until, uh, you know, I was able to dig it up in uh, some old books and, and newspaper articles in, in, in Phoenix and began investigating it. But the more I looked into it, the more that it seemed that it really had happened and that there really was this unusual cave. Uh, in the Grand Canyon, and that the the local Navajo and, and Hopis uh, knew about this cave. And in fact, they, um, there was a, another explorer whose name was Seth Tanner, who lived around there, and he was, he, apparently he went into uh, a secret cave system there too, which was probably the same. And the Indians would have killed him, but he was married to a Navajo woman and a, and a Hopi one, I, I guess. He had two eyes. And they decided to let him live, but they blinded him. And he was very famously a blind man who hung out in, in Cameron uh, there in Arizona, near, near the little Colorado. And it was because he had seen this place. This secret place. I think that rangers don't know about it. I mean, uh, it's not like if you're a ranger or something in the Grand Canyon, you're gonna know all about this. Uh, but but it must be a few people back in Washington D.C. Who, who are aware that, that this happened. And even there's got to be some papers and and theory artifacts back at the Smithsonian.